man, this is really living. We're committed to the art and nothing. Hey guys, we cool it here. I'm going to give you a video real quick. Hopefully I can keep this one kind of short. Um, got some stuff to share with you here. Obviously, guys, you're looking at uh, the sun and what is the Planet X object. Okay, if you guys remember a couple days ago, there was a CME that popped off right here. Well, this is what it illuminated. This is a picture that Scott um, had worked on that, you know, he converted it up to 4K and made it basically look at that. I mean, look at the detail in that. I mean, I don't see how somebody could look at that and think that that's not actually an object. But, yeah, I mean, I showed you, you know, the, the couple videos back. Let's see here if I can find my thumbnail. Um, let's just take, yep, there it is. Okay, this was a thumbnail. This was from, you know, Lasco C2. And obviously, that's the same object, same spot. But Scott was able to take that data, basically, and convert it up to higher definition. And that's what he came up with. <laughs> That's, yeah, that's pretty awesome. Um, it's very, very uh, detailed. You can see the shadows are in the right place. The, the light is coming from the sun, you know. So, so we were talking, you know, guys, and we're trying to figure out, you know, why certain things are happening. You know, we're talking about this, this thing has its own electromagnetic field, which is the disturbances we're seeing on the magnetosphere models. It's not solar wind. Okay, these are disturbances coming from all this stuff that's happening right now. Basically because this thing is in the spot that it's in right now in relation to the sun. Okay, um, there could be some cosmic radiation and rays coming in. You know, we could get that at any time. Um, but those models can't differentiate between that those. Okay, and I'll explain more here in a minute. But what we're talking about here, guys, I was talking to Scott and, you know, just trying to figure some stuff out, throwing ideas around and all those kinds of things. And, you know, it came up in the conversation and me and him were kind of on the same page on this, that, you know, when this thing induces a CME, okay, it's basically plasma, right, guys? So that plasma will engulf this object, okay? So it take, basically it takes on the shape of the object it hits, Okay, that's why we see what we see here. And then it also explains why as this goes on out into space that it holds that shape for a minute, but then it starts to cone out. Okay, basically. And we see the typical, you know, CME signatures that we always see. Okay, now this here was one of the most odd CMEs I've ever seen. Okay, the shape that it took, the the path, the speed of it, it was just all, just seemed really, really strange. And this is why, because this is what caused it. You know, and, and I can't help but wonder if the electromagnetic field of this thing isn't getting stronger because it's feeding off of the sun. Um, or, or other objects, or what have you. Um, we can go to SDO, and I'm going to show that in a, in a future video, that... The SDO is actually pointing to this this object when it's out of camera view. Okay, I've got captures from the the 171 Angstrom that the sun reacts at the top going down that direction and at the bottom going up that direction, basically pointing to this thing when it's in its right here. They're not big reactions, but they are releases of energy towards this thing. And then as this thing gets close, they ramp up, they get more intense, and then all of a sudden we get this CME, right? Now, Scott was talking to Dr. Albers, and I'll let him go into more detail about this, but he was asking her if it was even possible that if this CME was to hit this object, if it could knock it out of its orbit a little bit, but yet the sun was still strong enough to, to basically drag it back into its orbit, and she said, yes, that was possible. If I, I hope I explained that right. I'm pretty sure I did, but, um, you know, we had a pretty lengthy conversation yesterday about this, and and we're, I think we're on to something here when it comes to this. Um, you know, the whole 28-day orbit thing, that was, some, that was awesome to be able to figure something out like that because we're able to plot this thing, and it's there 
like clockwork, guys. Um, you know, the reactions the sun has in certain days, uh, we can say in specific dates that, hey, this, this may happen. And, you know, this thing doesn't always have to induce a CME on the sun when it's in certain positions, okay? There's certain things that have to happen for any CME to, to, to go, right? Now, like I said, this thing is causing disruptions because we're seeing it in the magnetosphere models. And what am I talking about? Well, I did a video yesterday, and I want to clarify a couple things here real quick because I had a lot of questions about this particular model. Okay, this is the one over at Space Weather. Okay, now I've said this, and I must not be explaining myself well enough. I'm, I'm not sure, or maybe I just didn't. Maybe some of, some of you guys didn't hear me say it or what have you, because I do talk fast sometimes. But yesterday, this is the model, right? Now, what I want you to pay attention to, guys, is the date. See the 25th? Okay, obviously, it's not the 25th yet. But up in the top, it would say... Let's see here. Yeah, this one shows it. Okay. If I would have got the whole capture in there, guys, it would have said 725 at the top here. Like this one says 726. Okay. What that is, is that's the last day that it's forecasting to. Okay. I've said this, that this is a historic and predictive model. It's a forecasting model. Okay. So what it tries to do is, today is, what is today, the 20th? Between the 20th and 21st. Okay. So what it does is it takes... The present day and it gives you the the data that actually happened okay historically they that that is the real data two days behind us okay then what this model does it tries to forecast what the conditions are going to be for the next five days just like like if you click on a weather channel app or go watch the weather channel come on guys we all know what local on the eights is right I mean, most of us, <laughs> I know it's kind of funny, but local on the H changes every day, sometimes every hour. That's the, that's the same thing that's happening here, guys, okay? They're trying to forecast something. Um, they're probably doing the best that they can, but they just simply cannot get very accurate with this yet, okay? Because they're not, and let me show you why. This is the one I showed you yesterday. And it shows you down here in the bottom right, guys, when this was created. That graph was created on 7-20 of, of 05. So it was created on the 20th. All right, that's why you see five days out and ahead of it. Well, this is the one that was from today. Okay, so what I'm going to show you, this one predicts out to the 26th, obviously. Okay, this was created on the 21st. So this is the present time, and it shows us what happened the last two days right then it tries to tell us what's going to happen for the next five but what i want you guys to see here between the 22nd and about halfway through the day on the 23rd what is that you see that that little hump right there it's even down here and the velocity this is the density up there okay you see that well you don't see it up here on the 22nd and 23rd. This is the one that was yesterday. Matter of fact, it was actually lulling down a little bit. So, what's happened? Let me, let me explain to you guys what's happened. They've seen something that they think has changed. Okay, the computer model itself or what have you. And it's, it changes its forecast just like it will do when you guys click up your hourly weather map on your phone and it tries to tell you down to the hour what time it's going to rain right and we all know that most of the time half the time that thing is way off you know i have to work outside so i pay attention to that and i'm telling you right now more times than not it's wrong but that's beside the case so you can imagine how we're trying how these guys are trying to predict something as large scale as solar wind and density Okay, we're not just talking about a cold front coming through, guys. We're talking about a corona hole opening up and shooting highly charged particles at the Earth. Okay, <laughs> trying to time it out. And yeah, so and the speed of that changes so that it 
that would change what day it got here and everything else. So that's why when we're talking about these disturbances, okay, and I'm going to show you guys this. This right here is showing you the, the, the purple is the, um, the, so, the solar wind speed, okay, the wind speed. The, the orange is the density, and I've talked about this a lot of times, guys. See these little spikes, okay? That's when we were seeing those waves come in, right? Okay, now this graph is trying to say it had a spike in solar wind and density. Well, that ain't what happened. Let me tell you why. The biggest reason is because when we see an increase in solar wind, what, what should we do? What are we supposed to do as people that try to report on this or research it at all? Well, we go to the sun. Okay, so, so it has to come from the sun if it's going to be called solar wind. Okay, sun, solar, you know, there's some definitions there, right? So when we go look at the sun, and there has been no flares. There has been no CMEs that were earth-facing. And there were no coronal holes. So where did this spike in solar wind come from? Well, guess what? It wasn't solar wind. It was just a spike of energy. Okay, I'm just going to call it energy for right now. That's what this was. That's why you see these little spikes. The model, this model is flawed in that way because it just looks for solar wind in direction of it. and bases everything it sees off of solar wind. Now, does, it, does this mean that this model is, means nothing? No, that's not what this means. Because it's still picking up a disturbance. It's just trying to say that it's solar wind. Okay? That's the difference. So, when it when we look at this model, and up here, that's supposed to be the, the solar wind speed for that this particular capture. And then we go look at the sun, and there's no coronal holes, then guess what? That's FUBAR. I mean, that doesn't... It doesn't mean that we didn't have some sort of disturbance that was according to this model moving that fast okay what it means is that it just did that it did not come from the sun when we go look at the sun but this model is trying to trying to say that it's solar wind but it's really not okay so that that's the difference okay this this model is based off of solar wind and we know that it wasn't when it shows these spikes because nothing was going on in the sun during this time. So what's causing these spikes, right? That's what's causing these spikes, guys. And we've been talking about this. Things travel extremely fast magnetically, okay? So when you see a little short duration spike like that, you know that that was moving fast and hard, right? Way faster than the solar wind could move. So it's traveling in a different conduit or a different road, what we could call it, just to bring the terms down a little bit. Okay? It's traveling magnetically, and it travels very, very fast. Okay? So things can change direction. Things can come at a different direction. Things can come at different intensities. Now, how do we know what intensity it is? Well, we don't. Okay? But we can tell by the by this even this graph here that heat was increasing because that's what it's trying to show okay the pressure all those kinds of things that we talk about now again when it tries to say it's solar wind we have to go look and make sure that it actually is solar wind so what could these spikes be well like i said cosmic rays and radiation um and majority of them, I think, and I think a lot of us are back onto this page here, that it's being caused by this. Whenever this thing gets close enough to the sun, it interacts with it, and it causes disruptions magnetically, and we see those disturbances here. You know, evidence being, you know, that model itself getting all jacked up, okay? Um, earthquakes increase, okay? We're seeing different signatures, different... All kinds of crazy stuff happening around the world, okay? All that stuff can be led right back into this. So, and I'm going to do a video on this in the future, but 
you've seen this right here, okay? You see the see the red? I've circled it. That means that, that that has made it through our shield. Okay? See that red here? Because it's going around like that. Like like it's hit hit something. Our our magnetics, it's hit our magnetics. It didn't make it all the way in, okay, but it did make it past that part of the shield, our bow shock. Okay. And that was back on the 14th. Well, it's happening more than once. Okay, that's on the 20th right there. So what's going to happen is it's going to increase the heat. And we're starting to see evidence of that now. Okay, because I've talked about this before. I mean, you guys see that breach right there. Now, if we go look at this one, you can see it very, very well. This was taken today. All right. Now, if you look at this, you see how you got increased pressure here and here, and it's not so much here. Well, why isn't the pressure there? Well, because the shield is weaker there, and whatever energy is coming from this direction doesn't have to push as hard because the shield's weaker. And this right here is something else I'm going to talk about real quick, and I'll go more into detail in a, in a future video. But do you see all this light stuff that's inside of the satellite line here? But yet we see a darker color around this way. That means that that heat, that's, that's heat building up, okay? Basically. I'm just using basic terms here, guys. But yet, there's not as much out here. Well, how can that happen? Well, because the cosmic radiation and rays and, and, the, and all the disturbances we're getting from the Planet X object and, and its disruptions is starting to heat us up. Okay? Not just... You know, that's... Yeah. Seating us up and all the area around us. And you can see that. It's very evident here. Okay? I mean... There you go. Look at that. Okay? You're seeing like almost an exhaust too. Look back here. You see that? It's almost like... I don't know. I don't know, I don't know if the Earth is actually pushing that some heat on out because it's holding too much. I know that it can like hold energy and like release it once in a while which is kind of like a, a discharge like a capacitor it can do that um, at least in my opinion it probably should be able to because we have you know magnetics so if it's holding too many too much charged particles it's got to release it somewhere right maybe that's how it's releasing it maybe it's creating that heat um, infrared comes into this scott was talking about that a while back infrared we don't see infrared with our eyes but it does create heat so maybe we're getting smacked with some infrared stuff. I can tell you this. I was at a cookout. And the sun went down. It was about 85 degrees when the sun went down. And 10 minutes after the sun went down, it was 95 degrees where we were standing. The temperature actually went up. Now how does that happen? You know, I'm sure there's some big scientific explanation for that. If that's just an anomaly... But I would be curious to see if anybody else is experiencing that. Now, I did see a video that Mr. MBB3 put out today. You guys should go check it out. I think uh, Dr. Albers might have did an article on it, too, um, talking about uh, somebody had a, caught a capture after sun, sunset, and it was in the northwest, and it was very, very bright. It shouldn't have been that bright. Stars were out. So I would encourage you guys to go check that out, but... That, that could lead into some of all this discussion, too. So, yeah, I mean, I think that we're starting to heat up. But I, I did want to clarify that stuff on those graphs and, and, and explain that a little bit more. But the main thing I wanted to get across here today, guys, is look at that. I mean, it's, it's just hard to deny that there's not something there. <laughs> um, and I know there's going to be people that do. Um, I'll probably get slammed in the comment section, but that's okay. Um, you know, that is what it is. I, you know, everybody's entitled to their opinions, but you know, I, more and more, the opinions that we share here in this community are getting backed up by observational evidence. And this is a very clear observation that turns straight up into hardcore evidence, guys. I mean, that's just something that we can point to, right? I mean, it's almost to the point now where it's not just hearsay or just a... I mean, it's getting to the point now where we can start pointing at things. If we can predict 
where this thing's going to be, that almost validates the theory of of uh, the 28-day orbit. It, it validates that there's something there. Um, it validates when we see these disturbances how this thing probably has a very, very strong electromagnetic field. Uh, it validates all that stuff because we're seeing these things and we're trying to put it together the best that we can. And I really hope that you guys can, uh, you know, I hope I don't confuse you guys too much when I start talking and, you know, about those graphs and stuff. I know I confused a few of you yesterday and I do apologize for that because I really try not to do that. Um, I, you know, like I said, I actually try to bring the vocabulary down a little bit just so everybody can understand it. Because I, I know that people that don't do the research themselves aren't really going to know the vocabulary as well. So that's why I use some of the, the, the other terms instead of actually going down that direct, I guess, technical vocabulary route. If you want to go that, you know, that way with it. <laughs> um... You know, because I know that in some subjects, I have to have that done for myself. So, you know, if somebody was talking about something that I really wasn't familiar with, obviously they're going to have to bring the vocabulary down so I can understand them. It doesn't make me any less smart or anything like that. It just makes me not just be that person that doesn't know the vocabulary yet. That's all that that means. So, anyway guys, um, I am going to end it here, but yeah. I mean, take that with it. I mean, let that image sink right in because that's that's it right there. <laughs> Just saying. God bless, guys. Yeshua saves, and uh, you can drink this Kool-Aid.